So if the absolute value of some number x equals, let's say, 4, that means x can have two values, right? Because the absolute value of 4 is 4, but also the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Okay, so we're going to just apply that idea to anything in absolute value bars. So if it, the absolute value of 1 half x plus 4 is 16, that means 1 half x plus 4 can be negative 16, or 1 half x plus 4 can be 16. Okay, and from here, pretty straightforward. Multiply both sides by 2, negative 40. Minus 4, minus 4, 1 half x equals 12. Multiply both sides by 2, x equals 24. Remember, we can always check those. 1 half of 24 is 12, plus 4 is 16. That gives us the positive 16. 1 half of negative 40 is negative 20, plus 4 is negative 16. Absolute value gives us 16. Okay? Easy ones. Um, oh, that was the last one. Let's go backwards. Um, I guess I should talk about, you might see something like this. Let's say you have the absolute value of x plus 8 plus 6 times 6 equals 0. Something where you might have to isolate first, so let's do that. We want to isolate the absolute value bars. So we got to be careful about this guy. What number, when I add it to 8, take the absolute value, I get negative 1. Negative 6 divided by 6, negative 1. The answer is there is no number, right? Anytime you absolute value something, you always get a positive. So if you end up with something like this, then you will have no solution. Okay, let's talk about roots. So the idea with roots would be to square both sides. So again, we're going to isolate the, the operation in question, in this case, x plus 3. Three, and then if I want to get rid of the root, I would square both sides and then solve what remains. End up with that. Now, you might have recognized the problem here. If I were to plug this back in, that's not true, right? The principal root square root of 25 is positive 5. So that's a problem, and we can always we always want to check our answers with these root equations, and also with these equations that I'm going to get to next to make sure we don't have an issue, a domain issue. And we might have seen this right away before I square both sides. If you just look at that piece, you say just like the absolute value guy, we got a problem. That can't happen, right? I can't take the square root of something and get a negative value. Just like you can't take the square root of, or the absolute value of something and get a negative. So we can recognize at that point that there's no solution. Or when we did our check, we could recognize there's no solution. Okay, how about this one? This one's a little more complicated. In that I get the square root of x plus 49 equals x minus 7. Alright, so I'm going to square both sides x minus 49, the square of that squared is x, sorry, x plus 49. And then this one I would have to square out, so I'm going to FOIL it. x squared minus 7x minus 7x plus 49. And now look what we have, a quadratic. This happens all the time, and this is why I spent so much time on quadratics. You'll get, you'll just end up when you have different types of equations, you end up with quadratics a lot of the time. And that's what I have here. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. That gives me a 0 on the left, which is good. And what is that? Minus, uh-oh. Minus... Uh, 15x, and then, well, that's good for us. Uh, 49 minus 49 is 0. Okay, so we spent all those that time on quadratics. How do I solve this? 
I like to try and factor first if I can. And this one has a greatest common factor. They, there's only two terms and there's an X in each of those. So I can factor it out. And I set each of these to zero and I get my two solutions. Now, are they really solutions? That's the question. Because we have to be careful when we do things like squaring both sides. If I plug a zero in here, do I get a solution? Remember, I'm taking the solution for x and plugging it in anywhere I see an x. And the answer would be no, right? Because you get the square root of 49 plus 7 does not equal 0, so he's out. How about the other one? Does 15 work? Square root of 15 plus 49 plus 7. Notice I plug it into the original equation. I put a little question mark there. Does that work? Well, this is 64. Square root of 64 is 8. 8 plus 7 is, in fact, 15. So when I answer that, I only have one solution, x equals 15. Okay, good. Last one. Now, whenever I solve a rational, I'll give you a couple of these to try. Um, the idea is to, maybe I'll start with an easier one. Uh, that's a rational equation. What you want to do is multiply everything by the least common denominator, and then you won't have any fractions anymore. That'll always work. If I multiply everything by the least common denominator, these denominators will divide into it. So in this case, this, this is a 1. The least common denominator would be 3 times x, just the product of the 2. So I'm going to multiply by 3x everywhere and see what happens. So 3x times 4 over x minus 1 third times 3 over x equals 24x. And like I said, this will always happen. The denominators given will divide into your least common denominator. And then you'll just get 3, in this case, 3 times 4 minus 1 times x equals 24x. 12 minus x equals 24x. And I get a solution. Okay. Um, you want to check that. You can plug it back in, make sure it works. Because uh, we do have to be careful. There are domain issues here. Uh, we'll talk more about domain next week. Um, so in general, if you, if you can factor, you want to factor... And then you can see there's an x plus 2 shows up here. x minus 2 shows up here. And this has the product of the 2, which makes my LCD that guy, right? Because this will obviously go into itself. And then over here, x plus 2, of course, will go into x plus 2 times something else. And x minus 2, of course, will go into x minus 2 times something else. So we do a little bit of canceling. That leaves me with a 4 times x minus 2. A 1 times x plus 2. And a 29 times 1, right? Because everything else canceled out. And we have, we got lucky for this one. We ended up with a linear equation, not a quadratic. Sometimes you'll end up with quadratics and you'll use your quadratic skills to solve it. In this case, I'm just going to do the linear method for solving and then make sure to check my answer. 4x plus 1x is 5x. In this case, it looks like I'm going to get a nice integer answer. So be careful. We're just going to make sure that works. Okay. So if I were to do the check, I'm going to plug in a 7. So it is 4 over 7 plus 2 plus 1 over 7 minus 2 equal 29 over 7 squared is 49. 49 minus 4. That is, does 4 sixteenths plus 1 fifth equal 29 40 fifths? 
Well, it doesn't look like it, but let's see. This is one fourth plus one fifth. Is that true? Doesn't seem to be true. So that is a common LCD of 20. Put a four up here, put a five up here, nine twentieths does not equal 29 40 fifths. But I thought I did this one before and got the correct answer. So let's see, I'm gonna check my work again. Cause I'm wondering if I made a mistake. Maybe you guys saw it somewhere. Um, let me check. Or we could be right. So far, if I'm right, then there's no solution because that did not work. Uh, but I just want to make sure that's right. So let's see. X plus 2, X minus 2, 29. That's good. Uh, X plus 2 times 1. That is correct. And then 4 times X minus 2 is correct. 4X minus 8. 1X plus 2. 29. That looks good. 5X minus 6 is correct. 29 and add 6 to both sides. I get 35. 5x, that's correct. So I think we're good. So 7 is my answer. Now that I do the check right, 4 ninths. Um, that's where I made a mistake right there. You probably noticed that. 4 ninths plus 1 over 5. Uh, does that equal 29 over 5? 49 minus 45, yes. So let's try that again. So I am right up to here. A lot of times with these, I, I realize I think I made an error because a lot of times with these, you'll get a solution that's like negative two when you do the work and you'll realize negative two isn't a solution because that's a domain problem. So I was pretty happy that was right. So now let's see if it works out. Four ninths plus one fifth, the LCD would be 45 times nine times nine times five times five. And it does check out. Okay, now there's only a couple of those, but hopefully you remember it. Uh, and while doing your homework, you'll have a lot of those uh, aids and you can get a little bit of help, okay? But send me messages if you have questions.